So uh, let's start uh, with uh, with innovation. And usually, uh, when we start, uh, when we talk about innovation, I will uh, There is uh, a brief I'm going to show you uh, briefly. Our session will have two uh, parts. One part is quickly talking about how we innovate and how is our culture of innovation, how we, we look at and tackle innovation. And the second session will be about uh, maybe a little bit about the fourth industrial revolution, what is innovation, invention versus innovation, type, uh, types and characteristics of innovation, the innovation process, how Amazon innovates, and some examples and demos. Today, I'll share with you three examples and demos from the problem statement, framing the challenge, then the, pro uh, the problem statement, then the solution. And I'll, uh, I'll uh, walk you through that, inshallah. Uh, as you know, and uh, because it is very important to tackle this from a vision perspective and mission, uh, our mission as Amazon is to be the Earth's most customer-centered company. When we say this is our mission, it means customer is at the center of what we do. So we start with the customer and we work backward. What does this mean? Uh, we had more than 95% of our services are driven and requested and required by our customer. So we start from the customer problem and we go backward. There's one saying to uh, when Jeff Bezos started, he said that customers are always beautifully and wonderfully dissatisfied. What does it mean and why is saying that? Saying that, that uh, 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 when they come to us and they are dissatisfied, it means it raised the bar and it requires us to do better and more important things for them. And this is how we can look at it very, very positively. And if we have the example, uh, the time I'll show you, as you can see, we, we have multiple line of businesses from e-commerce, you know it, the devices, the streaming, we have Amazon Studios, Amazon Prime, consumables and retail. But also if you look at in the middle, AWS services, and we have more than 210 uh, uh, services. I just want to mention quickly, because this is an, uh, a remote uh, call, we spent uh, we spent 2020 around uh, 42 billion dollars on research and development and innovation. And when you do that, uh, and we are a company that's around 1.5 million employees. So if uh, why I'm saying this is like to spend that amount of money for that amount of customers, for that amount of services, for that amount of employees, it means you should have. Uh, uh, some uh, rules, some ground rules, some playbooks, something like that, which I will I mention. But this shows you also that we innovate at every line of business that we do. We keep innovating and we're innovating more and more. So how this started, the innovation started from the customer experience, as you saw, as you saw and you know, as our, uh, 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 let's say we are customer centric. We start from the experience. Once we enhance the experience, we have more traffic, then more sellers will join. It will provide more selection to our customers. And while we're doing that, we lower the cost and we lower the prices, and then it will enhance the customer experience. That's how we grow. So the price, the selection and convenience. Let's look at these four areas about innovation. I will not take uh, much time on that so we can delve into uh, innovation itself, but we uh, uh, organize innovation at four aspects. One of them is around the culture, one of them about the mechanisms, one of them about the architecture, and one about organization. I'll talk a little bit quickly about each one of them. Let's talk about the, uh, 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 let's say the culture. We have 16 leadership principles we follow every single day. And if you can see on the top left is customer obsession, but also we look always at inventing and simplifying, learning and be curious, dive deep, Higher and develop the best, and so on. And the, the last two, there were 14, but the last two that they were added two years ago, one of them is uh, strive to be Earth's best employer, and also success and scale bring broad responsibility. If I give you an example, if today we are running, let's say, Uber and Talabat and Netflix on our platform as, as AWS, this will bring more responsibility. Imagine even if we're running education system, medical, healthcare, fly, space, or whatever, this brings more responsibility. So the more we are successful, the more, and we scale, the more is responsibility on us to make the services available, scalable, and all of that. Invent and simplify. Uh, as you can see, we have, uh, uh, we invented many things and simplification, and we accept to be misunderstood. 
If this one, if anybody look at this, this is the first version of Kindle. And Kindle, uh, why we're being misunderstood? For you to know, when we started, uh, uh, Jeff started the, the company, he started selling books online. And then he thought and that he believed, and the vision was that he wanted, uh, he believed in the, in the cloud, and he said, I believe that the cloud will be important and we will have, uh, uh, we will have uh, online devices for the uh, books online. And people, they were saying, are you crazy? Uh, are you crazy? Uh, uh, this is like something that cannot be done and this is, should, you shouldn't do it. So then he created this one, the second version, and then this is the third version uh, based on that. So uh, uh, if you look at the Amazon Web Services, uh, just a second, I'm trying to log in thing. I'm trying to locate the yes. As you can see, we have 119 services and we have, uh, uh, we did 119 price reductions and we have fully featured services more than 200. And if you can look at innovation below is the features and capabilities that we built through the years. So if you look at 2011, 80 new services, but 2021, 3084. This requires something that we can organize uh, how we can uh, take decisions. Uh, this is something that uh, we call it one way or two doorway. Uh, one way, it is like a big decision. We cannot uh, pull back, but two doorway, it, it means that we can try, we can test, we can learn. And if it doesn't work, we pull back. Uh, mechanisms, also, this is something important. As you can see, uh, mechanisms, we have uh, working backward, and the one I'm going to show, show it to you later is how we uh, innovate. We we do press release, we can ask questions. And my previous uh, session, I explained a little bit more about it. This is the one, uh, the mechanism I told you about. We start with questions, we do press release. I'm going to share with you some of those. It is going into the future, thinking how we're going to do it without writing any code yet. We all of these things is called agile, agile innovation. And this is how we can uh, take decisions into innovation. Imagine $42 billion to innovate and use them for R&D and innovation. This is the way it is, it is done. This is a sample press release that uh, one of the Jeff Bezos was looking at it. And I want to tell you that this is exactly how we innovate our products with our customers, partners, and in the market. So this is the, the uh, this he wrote with his hand, what about mobile? These are the questions to do that. We talked about the Amazon Go last time, how we innovate, and this is how we did it. And uh, uh, last session, we talked, I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but this is how we innovated, how we created it, how we grew it, and how we uh, take it to the next level. And it became a service, and it became like Amazon uh, uh, Walkout. And this is the about Forbes. And this is like uh, now the technology Sandsbury in London. They are using our technology called Big and Go. And this is how we innovated from a simple, problem statement. Now it is officially we're gonna be used and we talked about this. Uh, the architecture is the technical thing. Some of you, if you are technical, how we do that, we do uh, decoupling, we use APIs, and the one on the right hand side is the APIs uh, 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 for EC2. And this is like, it give us uh, decoupled, it give us the business logic separately, increase agility. Uh, uh, you're talking about, do you hear me? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so we, we, when you use APIs and from technical perspective, when it was small company, now it has thousands. If the one on the hand, uh, uh, right hand side is, is one service only, one service only, uh, uh, API is called EC2. So you can see. Now, if you look at, for example, if you want to innovate in any type of industry you have, for example, you're doing, uh, uh, you're selling online, you're in a bank, you are in a company, you are in anything, and you want to do, let's say, a payment. If you do the payment services as API and you call the payment, then you can innovate differently and you can do and you can scale. This is how we scale and this is how we do. So it increases speed and agility and innovation. 
uh, and definitely it allows us for instant experimentation. You can experiment at the lower cost of failure, as you uh, noticed through doorway. And if you not notice that we can scale rapidly. Uh, this all come with experience, so we pass the experience to our customers and partners. Organization, this is also very important for you. We have something called two pizza team. I mentioned it a little bit. It means that a team, which is four to five people that you can uh, uh, feed with two pizzas and uh, uh, the small decentralized empower authorized authorized that they can uh, authorize, sorry, that they can uh, own and develop by themselves. So you give four or five people, it's multidiscipline, you give them a task and they run and innovate with it. Uh, this is like the, uh, uh, as we can say, it's, uh, if you know it's gonna work, it's not an experiment. So we, we work on that. We had our failures and we should accept failures. And now 33% of our revenue comes from the marketplace. We learned from Firephone uh, and now we did it candidly. So this is in general, if anybody has any question about the culture of innovation, we can respond to it quickly. And otherwise I can start with the uh, uh, second session that's around innovation. And if you want to keep the questions uh, till the end, that will be fine also. Thank you. So uh, let me start with this one quickly. As, as we talked last time, when we look at innovation and how we innovate, usually there's an idea to enhance a product or service or new experience. And that will delight our customers. We define the problem. We're working backward, as I showed you, that we write the press release, frequent ask questions and uh, 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 visuals, and then we build it and we deploy it. And it's, we can scale. Uh, this is one of the things uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Mark Perry from Michigan University, University of Michigan, he did a study around the company's top 500, which is the largest companies in the world. And he found between 1955 and 2015, only 12% remained. Which, and why he looked at this? Because creative destruction. The creative destruction, uh, it means that they lacked the innovation and some innovative other company, they took it over. And if you look at the past 50% of those, they they just been created in the past 10 years. That showed you shows you that innovation, experimentation is clear is very critical for companies uh, uh, growth and uh, existence uh, there are many stories and you can tell uh, if you look at these things between 2005 and 2021 the largest top companies in 2005 they were multi things oil and gas banking uh, conglomerate uh, shopping but if you look at 2021 nine out of ten are it and that that shows something else and when I mentioned, uh, if you look at the screen, I showed you, I told you $42 billion is innovation, uh, research and uh, research and innovation uh, and development by Amazon. And if you look at the second is by, by far. This is why this is happening. And when we said why, uh, uh, PwC, they did a survey with 5,000 5, CEOs around the world. And they asked them, what do you think that uh, 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 what you think that will transform your business? 86% of them, they said the technology advances. And when we say technology advances, there's a reason why. Because it became very affordable. And if you look at the uh, uh, right-hand side, the industries, and you look at the technologies, we took a baseline of prices for 2007. Today, the technology cost is 1% of what it used to cost 2007, 1%. This made a, a lot of things. Like, give you an ex uh, give you an example. If we say like Taqm al Asnan in the Muhtabar, if it uh, cost by 3D printing, it used to cost let's say 15,000 jneh. It will never be sold. It will never be implemented. But today, if it costs let's say 15,000 jneh or 15 jneh, that made another area of business. If you look at the drones, at the solar panels, at the virtual reality, at the sensors. And that made it reality. So let me share with you. Uh, we, we wanted to mention a little bit about the uh, fourth industrial revolution. If you know the first, second, and third, 
But now, in Davos 2016, December, they mentioned, uh, they announced that we entered the uh, fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this means blurring the divide between the physical, biological, and virtual uh, divide. And I can give you an example. Uh, just give me a hint that if you hear the, uh, if you hear the voice. Lumos. Knox. So I wanted to mention what happened that this we controlled physical components through virtual means and this is was through uh, uh, mixed reality that you do uh, virtual uh, you do virtual action into physical components if you can see the robot we we managed to to control it physically which means we can control anything in any place in the world imagine that uh, uh, wells firefighting uh, uh, bridges anything can be security doors security controls through the virtual means and that was something came and that's why I wanted to mention a little bit about metaverse what are some of it and this is you can see by Gartner some of the technologies some of the and what is it by uh, let's say uh, controlling virtual it's collective of virtual open space with the physical aspect this one is just quickly to show you that 95 percent of a human brain can be uh, deceived by uh, virtual means and let me share, share with you this is just a quick Thing for you to see. So that was uh, quickly to show you that a person uh, or a young boy, he managed how he thought, believed a lot and uh, his brain was deceived. But look at this one. This one was also for, uh, I was there, it's, it was in, in one of the booth and it was physically uh, uh, a young guy uh, and he, uh, he was at the booth uh, in virtual reality. And I can tell you what happened. So this this showed showed that even even if they are in in a safe place and they're supposed to be uh, on ground in a booth in a showroom in an exhibition, but at the same time he believed or his brain believed that he is gonna fall and he fell and he broke his nose and that was a real story there. So I want to mention that even though if we think there's a lot of innovation behind that and there's a lot of we've done multiple. Uh, 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 multiple uh, prototypes and uh, 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 MVPs to to cure this like cure people. Uh, some of them is like uh, treatment, uh, phobia, uh, 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 public speaking, uh, phobia from anything that can be can cure 
Right. And I want to mention something. It was interesting. I'll show you this. Now, even if you look at this, this is uh, uh, even uh, uh, this even in Turkey, and it's proven even for with animals that the cow they put they used uh, uh, mix uh, so they used the uh, virtual reality, and the cow felt that they are in a green pasture with the music and all of that. And what happened? Thirty five percent. 35% of uh, milk increased the, uh, the quality and the quantity. So that gives you the imagine of uh, uh, a lot of area in that uh, field. So last time we talked about invention, which creating something for the first time. Innovation is enhancing contribution to existing product. Excavation, we mentioned that it is something that we've done uh, uh something in a mature way that doesn't need we talked about the drones we talked about the innovation and integrating two things in a deeper and more meaningful level we talked about uh, uh what does it mean like uh, each one of those two uh, let's say technologies if you integrate for example longer batteries longer co connectivity antennas stabilization all of that all of these things integrating more things in order to enhance the user experience or better experience and we talked about the innovation, excavation, and what does it mean? It means that something can last long with you, but the other side of it, if you don't innovate and you think you're innovating, that's the, the bad side of excavation, like on the right-hand side, the Mitsubishi Pajero on the upper-hand side is two, a year 2000 made, and the one below is 2020. And that's why if you look at, there's a very little innovation, that's why it discontinued and people took over that, that uh, market. Uh, we mentioned uh, uh, also about the product innovation, process innovation, and business innovation. What are the questions we need to ask? How we we look at the uh, the, the uh, mental model? Uh, you look at uh, uh, be stubborn, as we said, on the vision, but flexible on the details. Be clear on the why, but flexible on the what. Uh, how to create? This is a very important slide. Is to uh, when you try to innovate, the mental model is a form of a simple statement of cause and effect. If you manage to write the problem according to Kidland's law, if you manage to write the problem properly and accurately, you're 50% solved it. So the root cause, statement of cause and effect, I'm gonna share with you three examples we didn't share last time to show you how it is done. Look at something that crazy enough, but also you can learn from experts and beginners, rational listening and history. Many of our products have been uh, 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 innovated through uh, science fiction and maybe Star Trek, the Fire TV, the Kindle, and some of that. So this is something we talked about the uh, uh, empathy. We talked about design thinking last time, so we'll not repeat it. But this is also is how you scope, how you define. This is the qualification. We talked about this. And then we come to the cloud. This is like for anybody, if you ask you who's the big players in, in the cloud, as you can see, uh, according to Gartner, there are three players. Amazon has been there uh, uh, leading for the co consecutive 12 years. And that's why the, you know, the cloud can make you, and there's a lot of services. We talked about the architecture, culture, all of that. And we talked about the uh, 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 cultural innovation. This is part of our design thinking, how we look at it. We, we look at the customer interest, then we engage, we define, we prototype. And this is, we follow the design thinking in 10 weeks. If you can look at the sprint, it's 10 weeks to create something. Uh, look at the customer, we talked about customer uh, uh, problems, opportunity, how we benefit, how we do it. And then we write the press release, frequent as question and visuals. And then I'm gonna share with you, this is like exact one page press release, uh, multiple questions you ask, for example, if someone asks around the meeting, it is like, is it uh, paid? Does it have a, 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 a uh, marketing material, brochure, is it on mobile? Who's gonna do it? Does it need a bandwidth? Does it need a specific technology? Does it need a specific operating system? Then you write a storyboard. So all of these things from innovation, how we innovate as Amazon without, without even writing a single code yet. I'm gonna share with you, uh, this is like a storyboard. This is a real case, we've done it. And let me share with you uh, three case, use cases just for you to know, uh, uh, that has been developed. They they won the best senior project. Many of them, or some of them, they became startups and companies. 
So let me here just uh, have a, uh, still we have time. If anybody has a question about what happened, then I'll walk you through uh, three uh, case studies. Any question about what we mentioned, innovation, culture, culture, design, uh, mechanism, organization, all of that. If anybody has a question, we can answer it. Then I can continue with the three examples. We have 15 minutes for the rest. If anybody has a question, otherwise, if you're okay, give me a hint and I'll continue. Thank you. Thank you. We leave the questions till the end, uh, but I want to walk you through three real examples. It started with the customer solved at the university, and then uh, it became a startup entrepreneur, and then it became commercialized, uh, went live. So let me walk you through three examples. I brought this example to show you how we innovate, uh, how we solve real world problem, how we did it through the university and how we did ma uh, mature it into uh, a real case. So the first one, and this is the way I like to name projects also with a meaningful name. And I think you know that Mersad is museum or monitoring interactive real time security and detection. So. This one, uh, the, the uh, Bahrain Museum, and I worked with the uh, Museum of Egypt uh, before, uh, they have an issue, for example, like the uh, very rich museum in Egypt and Bahrain, which is, goes back to thousands of years back. Some of those artifacts are very, very uh, delicate, very expensive, and it's even priceless and very delicate to move them. Uh, for the environment, uh, uh, worry about uh, about their safety. So they came to us and say, we have multiple uh, uh, stores and multiple uh, storage areas, and we have multiple uh, very, multiple expensive items, priceless, and we want to uh, detect and we want to know. Uh, usually in Bahrain, I'm telling you about the Museum of Bahrain. They have uh, they participate in events and uh, let's say exhibitions, and they need to take some of those artifacts, some of them, let's say, into exhibition and uh, uh, definitely the less delicate ones. But also they said we, we cannot control, we cannot know uh, if we need to know where is that item, if it is taken, if it is in an exhibition outside the country, inside the country, and who took it and all of that. So we, we had, uh, 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 we integrated some technologies with cameras, but also with video streaming and the face detection uh, uh, and even sensors if the item has moved from its place and you detect the person of enter the stores if he has uh, empty handed or carrying things and all of that logged in a stream uh, called kinesis video streaming and also it has additional things because you can say i want to see in the past month who was wearing a red t-shirt who took a parcel from that store in the past one month for example it can give you all of that so that that's type of technology to do that. So what was the problem? As I mentioned, uh, the problem is uh, mechanism. Uh, the problem is lack the mechanism and control valuable assets. Six different stories. The challenge: how can we utilize technology to manage, control, and track? And this is the way. If you want to do it, start with the problem, then the challenge, and then you draft a little bit of the solution. How you expect it? computer vision, IoT sensors, visual dashboard, uh, analytics technologies, real time, all of these things. So we talked about problem, challenge, solution, and this is something also I want to mention. This was the second phase of it. We created a mobile application with uh, 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 augmented reality. And the one in the middle is a hologram that a piece inside the, uh, let's say, uh, the art piece of the month. It shows here, it's controlled by voice, by Alexa. It shows you in hologram, a 3D with the explanation. And this is the one on the right is the dashboard that shows you red, yellow, or green. Red, it has it is removed. Yellow, it is placed in an exhibition. And green, it exists. So this is, in general, solving a real-world problem. Now we are deploying it at the airport. And this is something started from a small problem. Why? Because the museum, as you know, it has a lot uh, of visitors. but by by time it's the younger generation are not coming so they created they wanted to ex to attract the young generation coming to the museum to see the history and that's why the gaming this is augmented reality and i have a video for that if you are interested i can share it later with you uh, that can 
even you can have on Snapchat and scan a barcode, you can, uh, the item can be next to you, you can take a photo, it can be immediately posted to Snapchat, Instagram, and your social network, as if you are standing next to it in real, and then gamification and mobile application, and now it increased the number of visitors. So we started with a small problem, and then we defined the challenge and we defined the solution. This one is, uh, is uh, uh, another uh, story, uh, just for you to see how we do it, we start with a problem statement. Uh, the the uh, Fodder and Nursery Farming Department came to us and they said, we have 5,000 uh, 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 farmhouses and let's say green greenhouses, uh, and we uh, uh, have 26 types of bugs and we have multiple types of diseases and uh, the uh, farmers are not very well educated to know uh, which type of disease, what type of pesticides or fertilizers, and we need a solution. We created for them, and if you look at the problem statement, as you can see, they lack the tools and mechanism to detect accurately and swiftly the type of plant and bug disease and the location spread factor pesticides needed in real time. So they say we have a big problem because if you have a big farm, if a farmer goes inside, let's say he walks 10 kilometers inside the farm and he said, I might have seen that type of bug, and maybe that type of disease. By the time he goes back and report it, it might have spread, but we created for them, and that was the challenge, how we can utilize technology uh, to detect the infection, symptom, liquidation, all of that. And what we created for them is a full robotic uh, device I can share with you now, and I'll show it to you. We created from a, a robot autonomous drive from scratch. It has computer vision, the telescopic, it can detect the bug, the disease, it sends a location on a dashboard, uh, consider it as the, uh, and this was the pilot for the uh, greenhouse. And you can see here, let me share with you here. That is detected. So this, this uh, uh, robot, it has, uh, it's, it's from scratch, was welded, built with 15 types of sensors, telescopic and uh, 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 computer vision with IoT devices uh, that can detect, can spray fertilizers uh, and pesticides and can report the location, the type of disease, the name of the plant, all of that. And uh, it can also report the location. Of the so. So that was uh, uh, it. Just the the uh, just wanted to share with you the video. This one, this project one, as the best research project, the best sustainability project, and the best uh, uh, innovation project at the university among 100 projects. But this one also needs to to show you a little bit about the uh, 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 how it happened. It, it was more than 12 students. It's not a single student or two or three, and it was from five disciplines. And uh, why we say that? Because this one had uh, uh, the mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, electronic engineers, and it has uh, business uh, and it has subject matter experts, and also it has the ICT. They all came together to solve a real world problem. As you could see, we we talked about the we talked about the uh, uh, problem statement, about the challenge, and about the potential solution, and you saw it in action. So what we say that this was a senior project and it was solving a real world problem. The last uh, uh, case study before in five minutes I want to tell you about, uh, that was the Bahrain Paralympic Committee. There was a game uh, uh, um, uh, for people with disability called Boche game. I heard about it recently, I didn't know about it. Uh, we call it BASMA, to give the BASMA, which is a smile. It's Boche Automated Scoring and Measurement uh, Analyzing Tool. BASMA or BASMA, smile or smiles. And uh, that was, uh, we hosted in Bahrain, the uh, World Championship. And this World Championship uh, um, requires the game, and I'll show you the game, how it plays. Uh, this one, we had a problem that they spend unnecessary long time for running manually a single poche game. It takes around, it needs four judges real time, and it takes around 30 minutes to measure by hand, uh, by meter, by laser, by colors, by all of that in order to do the judging. And that was, uh, that was a problem that Bahrain, when they hosted the World Championship, there was a challenge 
that they they uh, they lost a lot of time because seven games play at the same time. We didn't have enough uh, referees. It cost a lot, and we played only 13 games in the whole championship. And that was a problem because we spent on everything, but we couldn't play more games, and it was not very good. They came to us and I say, can, how can technology help us in order to minimize the time, do more games, be effective, real time using technology and do the scoring and all of that. So I'll, what we've done for them, we created a solution with the computer vision, uh, with uh, uh, DynamoDB. We did a lot of uh, 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 even mobile app, tablet, like VAR, if you remember the VAR from the uh, soccer games, it can do the analysis and it shows. And this one, when we've done, because I wanted to tell you, if you look at the right hand side, that was, uh, I took the photo there. We built the playground in our offices and we played the game. And the two ladies here, one of them is a, a, a judge and one is from the uh, uh, union and the Olympic Paralympic uh, uh, Committee. And we played the game, we understood. So when we understand the problem, you'll be able to solve it. So this all happened before even we tried to code. And I will share with you a video around it. Let me share a quick video about it. What a shot from the red team to start off our finals. Ah, uh -huh, yes, just perfect. And an even better shot from the blue team. This is going to be a hard call for our referees. That's right, Nawaf. He's bringing out all his tools now. This looks like a very tight call. It's called for the second referee. This is closer than we thought. The referees are taking their sweet time with this one. They need to make sure they are right. And the decision... Red is closer. Blue team doesn't look happy here. He's actually calling for a recheck. The scoring is taking even longer than we expected. The audience don't sound too happy with this one. What a shot from the red team to start off our finals. I gotta say, I love the new automated scoring system. Same, especially with the 3D replay. Games go so much smoother now, don't you agree? No more delays, no more disagreements. This is the pure botcha action. So that was uh, just a quick, we had different video, but I wanted to show, share with you this. We have a video about every story I told you about, a very a professional video, but that was a, a, a case to show you how the problem st started, how we think of it, how we uh, analyze the problem, how we uh, 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 define it, the challenge statement, start with the customer, uh, 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 define the problem, all of that. So this is, this is a, a brief about how we innovate, what we do uh, from uh, innovation, from uh, problem statement, challenge, defining the solution, working on the solution, the mechanism I told you about working backward, press release, frequent ask questions, and how we write a storyboard, then how we solve a problem before we come to technology and solving technology. We use design thinking and we, uh, 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 so these are just a sample. We had more than 35 to 40 solutions. Many of them are bigger. I think I have uh, 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 three minutes before we start questions, because at 45, I'll give you the, the floor for questions, but uh, I'll give you another example. Uh, uh, aquaculture, uh, we had uh, uh, the fish farming uh, under the municipality, Ministry of Municipalities. They had 53 tanks. Each tank is five meters depth, uh, width and height. And uh, each uh, tank has one million fingerling. And uh, they used to do, uh, uh, they had a real problem. Uh, they used to do five types of sensors to check on salinity, pH, temperature, oxygen, uh, all of that. And uh, they, they write it three times a day, three shifts a day. So it means nine times they write it on paper. And they came to us and they say, if someone is taking the data or the sensors by manual, if he's away two hours from any tank, the fish will die, and this is a one-year season, and the mortality rate was 90%. So 90% of uh, 53 tanks die, which means like more or less like around 49 uh, uh, tanks, they are full die. 
uh, survival rate is only 10%. They said, if we manage through automation, do something that we can increase the, the survival rate by 5%, then we will have 5 million fish extra in Bahrain. So what we did for them, we did an IoT solution with real-time sensoring and with the mobile app, dashboard, alert, disaster and crisis management system with the, uh, Alexa, and it can give immediately notification that anything that happened to any uh, of those tanks. But it's not only that. We created the students, they created even uh, if there is like a drop in temperature, we had two pumps, one from the sea and one from the well. If the temperature in the sea is uh, cool, cooler, uh, we we push we, we we cool it from the sea. If it is from the well, we cool it from the well and opposite through pumps, real time. So it takes action, and the artificial intelligence they learn through machine learning, and it can take actions. So now there's a prediction, and now it went live, and the student graduated. They started their own company, and now they implemented on some uh, uh, farms, fish farms in the sea. So look at it from uh, the problem was a big problem. The challenge is known. We created the solution and then it went live. So this is like in, in general another story I uh, mentioned. Let me stop sharing and let me open the floor.